latency change on router 2. So if I do a show IP protocols on router 2, you can see I'm running OSPF 1, routing for the 2 network here. This is the network to router 1. And you can also see here that I have EIGRP process one started or AS one and we are routing for the twenty three two network, which is the connection to router three. So if I do a show IP OSPF, I'm sorry, show IP OSPF neighbors on router 2, you can see that I'm a neighbor, I have a neighbor adjacency with router 1. And then on router 2, if I do a show IP EIGRP neighbors, you can see that I have a, a EIGRP neighbor relationship with router 3. And if I go ahead and do a show IP route on router 2, you can see that I'm seeing all the interfaces that are being advertised from router 1 to me via OSPF. And then I can see all the loopback interfaces that are being advertised via EIGRP to me from router 3. Let's go ahead and just try to ping these real fast just to verify that we have reachability. like we're having problems here with getting to oops 3.3.3.3 is wrong should be 3.3.3.1 okay so there we go we have reachability now in our network so what we're going to do is we're going to start redistribution here and we're going to again configure mutual redistribution on router 2 that means we're going to be redistributing the OSPF domain into EIGRP and then in turn we're going to be redistributing the EIGRP domain into OSPF I'm also going to be explaining some very important rules here within redistribution things that a lot of people don't understand what's going on in redistribution and I'm going to try to clarify them with this example here. So first we'll go on to router 2. Actually let's go to router 1 and if we just do a show IP route what you can see here is we're just seeing directly connected interfaces. We don't see any learned routes at all. We don't see any OSPF routes on router 1. And then here on router 3, if I do a show IP route, we don't always see directly connected interfaces. We don't see any learned EIGRP routes. So let's go into router 2. What we'll do here is we'll go under OSPF process 1 and what we'll do is we will redistribute EIGRP into OSPF and we do this by the command of redistribute and then you can see here we have a bunch of options here of all the protocols and things that we can redistribute into you know into OSPF we're going to specify EIGRP then it's going to ask us for the autonomous system number of EIGRP in this case we are redistributing EIGRP AS1, which we have configured here. And we're going to follow it up. If we were just to hit enter here, OSPF will only redistribute the, the uh, EIGRP routes at the classful network boundary. It's not going to 
configure it's not going to consider I should say the subnets subnet information within the routes that are redistributed from EIGRP into OSPF so if I go ahead and just do this redistribute EIGRP1 it says it gives me a message here only classful networks will be redistributed so let's go to R1 As you can see here, we don't see any routes at all on R1. Because from router 2's point of view, if I do a show IP route at the EIGRP routes, it's just learning about these slash 24's within the 3 network. So, of course, these networks are not classful. That's why these aren't being redistributed. So if I go under OSPF again, what I have to do is I need to follow this command up with the subnets command. And now if I go on a router 1 and do a show IP route, what we can see here is that we are seeing our classless, our you know, subnetted networks from EIGRP. So this is one way redistribution that we've configured here. Uh, even though router 1 has these networks in its routing table, if we try to ping these 3.3.1.1, if I try to ping this, of course this is going to fail because if I go into router 3 and just do a debug IP packet, what we can see here with this command is that the pings are actually making them, you know, 